We're coming up to the mic, we're just standing. Uh, you can do it right there, but just state your name and address for the lead on there. Sure. Uh, name is Jacob Calvary's. Address is going to be 106 Lobs Run Road. Uh, so I came here tonight actually to, to bring up one uh, major concern that we have. Uh, through this presentation, I actually found several more, so I'm going to kind of run through three main ones here. Uh, the first is going to be the contamination of water. Uh, so we live about a thousand feet from where this well pad will be going in. We are on spring water. That is the primary and only water supply at our house. Uh, we have a 16 acre recharge, which I have from the DEP. Uh, and the well pad is going to be in that area. So my main concern, obviously, is contamination of our water supply. My pregnant wife, my soon-to-be born child, um, this is a major concern, right? Uh, so I would like to know what kind of safeguards, and, and as we have just heard, right, there's not an active cadence for testing. It is on complaint basis. And so if something is to get into the water supply, it's an after the fact, right? It's a, a posthumous sort of recovery, it does not make me feel very safe knowing that there is the potential of contamination and only upon my complaint will that then be investigated. Um, the second concern that I've now had is that I did not realize water would be being pulled out of the site. Uh, last summer, obviously, we had a bit of a drought, right? Our water supply was quite low as it was. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned about pulling more water out of our recharge area. Again, this is the only service of the water that we have for our property. Uh, so that is a concern to me. The final concern that I have now also called out, we are the property west of the pad, uh, where all the sound is being directed. Oh boy. Uh, we are, wow. again, about 1,000 feet. Jesus. Um, that is half the distance that we are to the Macintosh compressor station. Now, I don't know if that has the same sound approved levels. Um, what I can say is that we can noticeably hear the Macintosh compressor mm -hmm. station. It is loud. It is loud in our house. This is half the distance. Uh, and again, right, that opening is now aimed at my house, which I've just learned. So uh, all of these concerns, right, I, I kind of hope we can touch on. Um, thank you guys for coming today. I appreciate the presentation, of course. Thank you. Ed, Todd Kleiner, EQT. Um, I can address your, your comments. Um, if you have a specific concern, uh, specific, you know, if you've got a spring, it's within 1,000 feet. That's something that we definitely, our water folks, want to know about. And if you've gotten your, your notice for the water supply, uh, you know, write that in on, on your, your notice when it comes back so that whenever our geologists take a look at it, they know that there's this additional concern. Yes, uh, YIMS have actually already been out uh, oh, okay. and done uh, GPS coordinates for all of our spring property. Okay. Uh, but again, right, that does not address my main point of contamination. Okay. Um, so is your elevation above or below the well pad? Below. Mm -hmm. Okay, below to the west. Um, I thought that looked like that was above. But no, I let's, actually let's have a uh, map from the DEP. Uh, Don, Don Hegberg, I believe, is his name. Okay. Came yep. out last summer, and I have the 16 acre recharge mapped out again going up into the pad. Yeah, Don's the guy that handles all the complaints for the DEP whenever they do come in. Um, so how do you get in touch with her? That's my complaint, too. The, the, con the contact number for the DEP, you know, I know it off the top of my head, the Southwest region is 412-442-4000. But, I mean, it's on every piece of paper that we, we send out. There's I think about two years ago, just in mind, Rich Talk. Rich Talk. Rich Talk. Now, it's my concern, too. My spring's the only water source I have, and I'm very close to 500 foot from the pad. Now, they come out two years ago and tested me, and I heard nothing since. So his concern and my concern are pretty similar. And on the on the on the delay in the water testing, there is an answer for that. And basically, we were going to develop this pad, then we changed management, uh, and then the development plans changed. So now we're now you're rich. starting on it when they come and I've tested that. I'll, I'll look into that. So I, I mean, the data system. I don't know because I don't coordinate that. But so yeah. we're responsible for monitoring it. And like he said, if something comes up, what are we at? What do you mean, what do you If at? it's contaminated, well, we, uh, how do we uh, resolve that? We have you to contact us or contact the EP. And how soon are they going to be there? I think, I think there's a... There's a legal requirement that we need to replace your water supply, uh, I think, within 48 hours. Yeah. And on your second point, um, you, you're worried about water being taken from your spring. That's, that's not how this, this works. What we have with the Department of Environmental Protection is a water management plan. So any water source we use 
has to be approved as part of this plan. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, when I say a municipal water vault, what that is, the main water line running through the area, we'll put in, think of it as an underground hydrant, and we'll take water there. Um, we do have sources like, say, the Monongahela River. We can pull out of the Monongahela River. But the, the volumes, what we pull with it has to be at a true volume. We can't just take a limited amount where, okay, we're pulling from the lawn. We're going to take 7 billion gallons. It, it doesn't work. Like but that. are you developing water on the site? No. No. There's no water development on the site. When you say water development, you mean like... Are you drilling a well? No, 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 no. And if we, if we were, we would have to get approval from DEP to do that. And in my year, I've been doing water management plans for 10 years. I can think of two wells that were in Jefferson County that we did, and they were such low-volume producers, it, it didn't work out for It's us. a low-volume area, hence my... Right, right. right. Yeah, so, so, yeah. So, so this is clear, John. I mean, EQT is not going to be pulling any... Uh, surface or groundwater from a pad or anywhere near the pad, correct? Correct. The, the nearest water source is the municipal mall that I touched on. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, we have the property right across from Lucas, which is your name, please? Leah Fink. And we have horses that uh, use the creek that goes through. We have a well. Keystone contacted us twice. We filled out the, the surveys. We turned it back in. They said they were going to come out. Gave us a date. Never showed. Rescheduled. Never showed. Is Very that Keystone that didn't show? Yes. Oh, okay. Very concerned about the water supply. Okay. Now, the well, the Mama Bear well out by Mingo, apparently all their water was contaminated. Now they will have containers. I, that, 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 that's new to me. Because that would be a legacy rice site, so I don't know. I mean, I can't speak to that. Is there somebody that can to help us all feel more comfortable about what's going to be done with water monitoring and how that's going to be addressed? Because we, have, we have animals we want to protect. We have people we want to protect. We have and access to public water. Our your, council should be protecting I'm, our citizens. Your rights are spelled <laughs> out very clearly in the oil and gas regulations that it's our responsibility to prove that we didn't impact anything. Well, if we do, we're up. responsible for... <laughs> if we don't show up and sample it, then yeah. <laughs> if you made a complaint after we moved, uh, you know, put the bit in the ground and hadn't even touched the water, it would be shown to be our, our fault. Basically, is how the, the well, rigs how are written. How can they do that? Because they know they do not know where the aquifers are. They don't know where the water's coming from. So how can they say you didn't contaminate, it, or you did contaminate? It? That's that's just the way it, the regula regulations are written. It's it's. I hope you all are listening. Yeah. I'm own. recording. Uh, yeah. If if you have a complaint and we haven't taken a confirmatory sample that shows what the water quality was previously, yeah, then mm -hmm. it's our responsibility to replace your water supply. Containers that are refilled. Either, you, I got a question. It's a permanent yeah. supply, so it would have to be a redeveloped spring, a redeveloped well, or connecting you to public water supply. Well, if you was to connect this to public water and the water's free right now, who pays for the public water for the rest of the time? I water's never free. You have to you, know, you, have, to, <laughs> you have to pump it. There's electricity involved. <laughs> you don't ever have to clean your water supply. I do not need a pump. That is that is oh, a very specific situation. Mm, maybe in the one. There's a lot of them. So, does anybody else have any oh, yeah. other mm -hmm. individuals that want to speak that they can identify themselves? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm George Pepsi next to the well pad site. There you go. Uh, he's saying I'm 250 yards or feet from where the. Uh, from the pad. The top of my property, well, basically my property meets Sarah's two acres, and then the rest of the property is on the other side. Now, I measured it from the corner of my property on top to the side is 185 feet. Before the property? 180 yards. 185, no, 185 feet. It's 70 yards, almost 65 yards from the top of my property through his field to where your top of your pad's going to be. 165 feet. Yes, from my property, the house is down below. My property line comes up to the corner of Sarah's, goes over this way to Sarah's. On an angle going up to where your well pad is going to be, it's roughly 200 feet. Okay. And you're saying 
you have the right to drill because I, I, I got a lease with across the road somehow. I'm, I'm not understanding what you're saying. We're, we're getting our royalties right now from across the river. Right. Okay, now this well pad goes in. We don't get nothing off of that because we're already leasing, getting our... Uh, I, 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 I don't have a, a map of what it looks like. I, I've looked at the laterals from... I'm the closest house to this. Mm -hmm. Plus, oh I have God. the wind blowing off that hill 90% of the time. I lived here on that farm before Sarah owned it. My grandparents owned it. I know what the wind does up there. It blows constantly. I got emphysema. My wife has had surgery. My daughter's at, got asthma. And this wind blows constantly right down to my house. Constantly. And when you're grading up there, you're going to have dust flying everywhere. <clears throat> and like I said, the way you're structure was when we signed the lease, there was nothing about a well pad being in there. They was just leasing your ground. Now all of a sudden they come out with a well pad and have a grid put in. It has nothing to do with that well pad. So I'm going to be the closest to this house, to this property, and not make a penny off of it and put up with all the aggravation. Yeah, you, you have an active, you're held by production with, uh, from, from another lease. So, right. So, you know, depending on how the wells are unitized, how the laterals run, I can't say that you're not going to make anything off this well pad. Well, it's going to depend on the unitization of the well pad and how the laterals run. So that's that's not a, you can't say with certainty that you're not going to make anything off of this well. Right, pad. but you're still saying I'm within the distance of this well pad is is fine. Right, the way the ordinance is written, yes. Two hundred feet. Two seven hundred fifty feet from the top is because you have an active leak. So. Well, not 750 feet. I think what your lease says is that wells can be developed within 200 feet of your property. And what the what the ordinance says is that we need a waiver for anything that's uh, within 750 feet, unless there is a lease or other. You're talking document. about the wellhead you drill or the pad? The wellhead. Oh, yes. oh, so you're moving the wellhead which to make it further away. Mm -hmm. Now, what about, like I'm saying, about all this dust blowing? I mean, like I said, I got family matters, and I'm the closest one there, and that wind blows off that hill right down to my house. I, I, I can't speak to the direction of the wind. I have to believe you, but I, I don't know how to answer that. For you. Well, you're not protecting the community, then. If, you know, if you're going to let a wellhead go in there, and I'm telling them how the wind blows and everything, well, I can't tell a wind. What are you going to do for dust control on your access road? Right. They did dust, dust control know. on the access well, it, road. It, 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 you have this gentleman saying to get it. It's switched yeah. off. Yeah, I have my car. There's a lot of people talking. I don't know why you. Yeah, yeah if we could all, all right. for the benefit mostly of the court reporter, if we could not all talk at the same time and just That's fine. When, and, and actually, if you do ask a question, state your name first. So she, okay, she'll very good. That. Okay. So, dust control on the access roads is. Uh, we spray, they call it tree sap, but it's it's a, an emulsification that they use in for the DEP dirt gravel roads program as well um, that binds up the fine dust from That's the... Boring, boring construction? You asked about the access road. So yeah, during construction on the access yeah, road. During construction on the access road, yes, they use that. All right. Leah Fink, again. <laughs> um, for all those folks that weren't represented when they signed a lease, prime example is why you should be represented when you sign a lease. Now, it's my understanding that EQT was recently have, has a class action filed against them in Allegheny County for not paying royalties to landowners that should have been paid royalties or underpaid them. And I think the board should put a addendum or some type of clause in there to make sure that they have leases with everybody all around here. They're clearly worried about their bottom line, not ours. Well, most definitely. Right? <coughs> just a couple items. Just to touch on the concerns about dust and those items and which way the wind blows. The township ordinance requires them to comply with all standards. So any kind of action. So if their activity, such as the sound, they submitted proof stating that they will be able to with the sound load. If it turns out that they are not in compliance, the township can take action against them. I also just want to point out, and they've 
billion dollars that they will do this. Once the temporary construction activities the, the, of the site, including the drilling, is completed, within 90 days they have to come back and do another sound test to show what that well site is after all the dust settles, you know, that they're still within the township requirements then. And so they will have to prove that. Same thing with dust. If you get, if you have dust, if you have issues, you need to notify the township, just like any other operation in the township, activity in the township. If their activities are causing dust, noise, whatever it might be, sound, light, all of that, they still have to comply. So, you know, it, we could talk in hypotheticals, you would know better than most people, but if that is an issue, the dust becomes an issue, you need to contact the township because as part of any type of approval that they're asking for, they are going to be required to stay in compliance, not just in the beginning, but throughout. So those standards will apply throughout, just like it applies to you, it applies to any, uh, anyone else in the township. If that happens, you do need to contact the township because they will they will have to remain or remedy that situation. So um, just so you are aware of those items. And same thing with the water, those are all state regulated. You know, the township's preempted from that. Those permits and those things, you might not agree with them, I'm not saying the township does, there's been case laws that's come down. Township's preempted from regulating things that state has permits for. However, as part of this conditional use application, and they're requested if they were to grant be granted approval, they have to stay in compliance. So if there are water issues and they're not in compliance, you need to notify the township. We're not the inspection agency, that's the DEP, those are the regulations. But if they're not in compliance with those, you need, you need to let the township know because that, is, that would be a part of any type of approval that they're seeking. They're stating that they will stay in compliance, not with township regulations, but also all state-related regulations. So uh, there is a bit of a policing, I understand that might not seem fair. That's the way the state has, has set it up. Uh, their testimony is that they will comply with all state regulations, um, but if, if you don't keep them honest, I, I can't speak to that, but the township cannot go out and test that. So if you're looking for the township to do that, the township's preempted from that, but they are, the township still does have the right to ensure that they are compliant with all state regulations or federal regulations, other that are outside of the township's jurisdiction. So just so you're aware of that. Does anyone else have Questions or comments? Sir? Yeah, so you say your name. So we off the top, top topic is what you're on. Tom Jackman, 7 Victoria Drive. Uh, I'm curious, what, what horizons are you going to cap with this gas? Marcellus. These are, these are supposed to be Marcellus walls. Yeah. No, just Marcellus walls at this time. Okay. Uh, will the gas that you harvest be directly usable for pipeline gas, or will it have to be? <clears throat> um, I believe that this is a dry gas area, so it would just be able to be put directly into uh, the pipeline. I don't think that there would be any dehydration that needs to be done. That sounds right. Do you plan to flare the wells? No. First spring of online? No. All the gas is captured. Flaring is, isn't something that's done except for as part of a safety procedure for when they're drilling. And that's not, that's, that's they have a, a flare that captures you know, potential gas or have a, a place where it's diverted. It's not something that's done as part of completions. And, and how long do those flares typically last? Do you know? Oh, and it's not a big flare. It's, it's a device they call a flare that's got a little propane thing, jet that sticks out, and every now and then it might puff you know, something like that. But that's only during <laughs> drilling, right? Yeah. There's, it's, this isn't like you see pictures from Texas and the Southwest right. with yeah. permanent large flares. Once you're in production, there's no flaring at all. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd be talking about the period right after the well is completed when you go get a surge of gas. No, that's, that's all collected and put in pipe. Okay. Uh, that the wall pad is that going to be lined with a rubber liner? Plastic liner? Uh, are there any ash products like fluid ice, a bunch of ash or anything that can be used in the past? No. It'll all be limestone. Uh, for the gravel. The uh, containment will be placed on top of the gravel pad. <coughs> 
So it's there's not a liner that goes underneath of the gravel. It's it's all lined above the gravel. That way it's easier to inspect. You can tell whether there is a leak or not or a problem that's going on. Um, we don't rely on on sub subterranean liners. Is there any water the on the site that No. Yeah, thanks, Ken. Is there any oh, notification? He's, he's the of, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Is there any notification of any to the residents of any water contamination or hazardous material waste? If there's a if there's a release um, in our emergency response plan, there is uh, it shows what the uh, what the notification ranges are. Uh, I can't speak to those specifically. I haven't looked in those in a while, but we are required to provide those emergency response plans to the township and to uh, emergency responders in the area prior to constructing the well site. Not the residents. I, they're available for public review. But it's, it's a big document. No. You won't no. get notified. <laughs> <You're safe>. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. How do you handle the casing? So, how do you handle the casing? That's not a drilling engineer. So, so basically, by the time we get to the coal, um, the, well, that'll be our third set of casings. So we have what's called the conductor, which is um, it's a thirty-inch hole drill on the surface, and the casing is twenty. It's a twenty-four inch. Um, round casing, and that's only four, in this case, it's supposed to be about 40 feet deep. The second casing is a 24 inch hole um, with an 18 and 5 eighths inch casing, and that goes to the, uh, that's the one that's like 23 feet below the uh, the deepest fresh water, and then the third string would then go through the mine. So, and that is a 12 and 3 eighths inch hole with a 9 and 5 eighths inch casing, um, 0.352 inches, so, Three eighths, three eighths of an inch thick steel casing, um, and that'll be run in this case approximately twenty nine hundred feet deep. And then, John, is there how many additional casings are there? Uh, one in this case, there are there's five casings total. So the coal would be the third, and then there's an intermediate and a production casing. Just a standard steel steel casing. Correct. Yeah, and. I don't know the specifics on it. Um, it it's uh, it's regulated by by the state. Uh, we have requirements. We have hit in the regulations. Again, you know, for the coal string, for example, um, it's it's about three eighths of an inch thick. Um, so so yeah, but it's 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 governed by the regulations of the state too. And are there any requirements or plans to do with uh, radon or methane monitoring in residential? Not to my knowledge. I don't. I believe mm -hmm. that's a common mm -hmm. practice. I believe. I believe we. I know we monitor for gasoline site, um, but at, at a residence, we typically don't. That, that would be new to me. Life expectancy of the sites. Um. From from the time we start construction till we actually plug the wells. Is that what you're looking for? Mm -hmm. A give or, 50 years, give or take, because it depends on on how much gas is in the ground, quite frankly, how well the, the gas comes out of the ground, uh, just the natural decline curve, so on and so forth. We say we ballpark it like 50 years, but Marcellus drilling sort of a 2007, so we're learning every day the, the <coughs> decline curves for the Marcellus. And in this area, too, we haven't drilled a lot of wells, obviously, so we're, we're kind of learning those decline curves as we go. So John, by comparison, the the active drilling and hydraulic fracturing stage stages, those are relatively short compared to the life of the well. Right? Correct. Correct. The, the, um, you know, in this particular case, the, the first dev run, for example, from start to finish is around a year. So and then we'll come back for a second dev run, it'll be about another year of active operations. But the rest of the time the wells are just kind of set there producing gas. Um, it's pretty Sublime, for lack of a better word, not a lot going on at the well site. You have some well heads, you have some production equipment. Um, for the most part, just not a lot of activities. There are well tenders coming in and out just uh, you know, check the status of the well, make sure everything's good. You know, they're inspected regu regularly and so on. 
Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the well site could be there for a while, you know, depending on the decline curve of the wells. And the gas is going to be produced at the site. 